everybody! As you guys know, we like to try out new products to see how they work with our reptiles. Whether it be a new enclosure, new lights, or new substrate, we like to try new things and share the results with you so that you can know what will work the best with your cold-blooded friends at home. We were recently approached by Jesse with Freedom Breeder and he asked if we'd be interested in trying their new product, Coco Blacks. This product was launched pretty recently, like August of last year, or 2018, and I had not tried it before. The closest thing we used would be like cypress mulch for some of our creatures that need higher humidity levels. But we're gonna try this out today with our African fat-tailed geckos and our false water cobras, and we're gonna see how they like it and how it works. <music> Cocoblox claims to be resistant to mold, it's low dust, it retains humidity levels quite well, and what I like about it is that it's actually a sustainable product, so it's kind of eco-friendly, uh, in that it's basically cocoa fibers, which are the byproduct of producing coconuts for human consumption, but I've never tried it before, so we're going to try it out, and just like any compressed, I'm gonna move this, just like any compressed bedding, you have to take this and soak it in water and then it expands and you have to do that before you use it. So that will be the first thing we do. There's a couple different ways you can do this. What we're going to do today is we're just going to open this up and soak it in a bunch of water. And this is a trick I learned from Justin Kabilka on YouTube. I was trying to find the best way to decompress this block and his channel is what taught me what I think will be the best uh, method. We're going to take this and I believe you just push it in the water. Don't overflow, don't overflow, you're gonna overflow. Oh, I should have used something deeper. <laughs> Throw more water on top of it. Okay. Oh, it's wow. expanding. Yeah, look at the water disappearing. It's going down, it's really soaking it all in. Jeez. Oh, it's growing in my hand. Ah! Okay, so I don't think I did this right. You're supposed to push it in so it's completely submerged, and then you wait till all the bubbles stop, and then you flip it over and do it again. But our sink wasn't big enough, so I'm gonna just <laughs> help it along here. And then I guess you take the whole brick out, and you just set it in a bin, and let it expand on its own. You let it drain first, set it in here. Oh, ah! it spill all over the place. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a failure. I'm gonna turn it like this. Oh my gosh. Look, it's done. It's already done. Okay, there's more in here than I thought there would be in one brick. The sink is still like half full. Maybe we should have used bigger bins. I think we should have used bigger bins. <laughs> that expanded a lot faster than I thought it would, honestly. I can see that. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. It's my first time with Coco Blocks. I don't know how it works yet. Um, now I'm going to attempt to remove the rest of the... Nope. So what I've learned here is what might work best is if you just put the whole dry brick into a tub of water and add some water and just let it sit and then everything is contained. You were right. We should have done that. He made it look so easy. <laughs> okay, I think I have all the pieces cleaned up from the sink, but what we noticed while doing this is the water afterwards is this dark brown color and this is completely natural. We you actually will see this with other wood-based or in this case coconut fiber based products because they contain an acid called tannic acid and this acid um, leaches into water and it actually is what causes like rivers to look a root beer brown color. It's because pine trees along the rivers have a lot of tannic acid in their needles. The needles fall into the water and dye it brown. So anyway, this is the same phenomenon going on. It's completely natural though. If the water's brown after you deal with this stuff, just know it's not gonna hurt your reptiles. Okay, we're done with that and check it out. One of these bricks turned into this much bedding. There is a lot of bedding here, like more than I was expecting. And it's actually, despite the issues we ran into, it actually seems to be a perfect dampness level. Like it's not dripping when I squeeze it, but it's definitely wet. So this should actually be perfect to put right into our African fat-tailed geckos tank and our false water cobras enclosure. We wanted to test it out with a couple different species so that we could see how they react and how it holds in humidity or how long it does. For these geckos and the false water cobras, we currently use like a cypress mulch bedding, which works, but the problem is that you buy cypress mulch when it's already damp. And then I've found that once it dries in the enclosure, it doesn't like to reabsorb water and then uh, keep their humidity levels high. It just dries out and that's it. 
But as we just saw, this was actually one of the tests I wanted to try on this stuff. Uh, as we saw, it immediately soaked up water from a completely dry state. So I think the cocoa blocks will kind of solve that issue. But we're still going to try it out and let you know how they like it. I think the geckos like it. We have the, their enclosure all finished up. We do have our male and our female together for pairing purposes. We bred some earlier this year, but uh, we just have this pair together a little bit later in the year. Anyway, they still are able to enjoy their kind of ceramic tiled area and they have their cocoa blocks now. The geckos reacted about the same as they do with any bedding change. Honestly, the geckos don't really show us much emotion when it comes to their substrate. But with fat-tailed geckos, although they look very similar to leopard geckos, they are cousins to leopard geckos, and fat tails actually need higher humidity levels than leopard geckos do. So I would not recommend uh, a moister, uh, humidity-retaining substrate for a leopard gecko, but for the fat tails, I think it's going to work out really well. If we had soaked it for a longer period of time in water so that this became like super saturated, I think that might be a little too humid for these fat-tailed geckos. But as it is right now, this I think is like the perfect uh, amount of moisture for them. So I really like that. I do still have a humidity box in for them because it'll probably dry out a little bit after a couple of days. But then I guess it'll just be as easy as dumping in some water and rehydrating it. But with the geckos done, now let's set up the false water cobra enclosure. And here we have Coco Blocks in with our female false water cobra, and she has not stopped exploring since I put this Coco Blocks in there and kind of redid her enclosure. So I think she really approves of it because she just hasn't stopped looking around and checking everything out, and she's been burrowing under the substrate too. So I think for her, and this is another higher humidity species, I think this is gonna work really well for her as well. Our false water cobra is about 17 years old now, so she's kind of an old girl, but she's definitely a fun part of our family. Our one concern with Coco Blocks fiber, and this would apply to other similar substrates, is that the uh, larger chunk size could possibly cause an impaction issue. So if a snake is eating in its enclosure and some of the substrate were to stick to the mouse and then it ingests the whole thing together, uh, I worry a little bit that it might cause issues there, but it's really the same for any substrate like Reptobark or similar cocoa fiber chunks. Basically just make sure that the least amount of substrate is sticking to the rodent, which is what I would recommend for any substrate, honestly. But I know a lot of people use this bedding for ball pythons and have really good luck with it, so I'm really excited to see how it does overall with our animals here. So far, it looks great. Cocoa blocks probably would not be good for dry desert species unless you were to break it apart or like hydrate it like what we did and then let it dry completely out because it's really good at uh, increasing humidity levels in the enclosure, which might not necessarily be a good thing for a desert species like a bearded dragon. So for dry climate animals, maybe do something else, but for anything that needs higher humidity levels, this seems to work pretty well for it. Uh, yeah, I'd say this holds in humidity quite well. Look at how much we still have left. We didn't even touch this bin. 
If anyone's interested in getting some cocoa blocks, it comes in these big bricks. It also comes in smaller ones if you don't need quite this much. You can just go to freedombreeder.com. I'll put links to their website in the description below, but in the meantime, I want to thank everybody for watching today's video. Thank you to our Patreon supporters for your amazing contributions in backing this channel. And finally, thank you, Jesse, for sending us some cocoa blocks so we could try it out. It was, it was a fun little experiment that we did. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Uh, ah! Spill all over the place. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a failure. I don't know what to do anymore.